Hi everyone, CJ here. Welcome to the fourth episode of the Water Margin Summarized series. In the previous episode, we covered the rise of Mount Liang, the headquarters of the 108 outlaws, and also how Song Jiang, its future leader, became an outlaw after killing his mistress. In this episode, I will cover the story of Wu Song, the outlaw who became one of the most important folk heroes in Chinese culture. For historical and cultural context, I will also talk about the various cultural spin-offs involving Wu Song and the East Asian 4X story structure, Qi Cheng Zuan He, or Qi Shou Ten Ketsu in Japanese. This 4X story structure is usually a lot more apparent in older classical films, but they may only be available in certain regions your streaming service serves, such as Hong Kong or Japan's Netflix. This is why it would be really great to have VPN service, such as the sponsor of this episode, NordVPN. Using NordVPN, you can easily change your region and access timeless classics from their respective locations. Akira Kurosawa's movies like Rashomon, for example, are only available in Japanese Netflix. Besides giving you access, NordVPN also shields you from snoopers and all kinds of cyber attacks by hiding your IP address and encrypting your traffic. The desktop app even has a new feature called Threat Protection. When you switch it on, it protects you from malicious websites, malwares, trackers, and intrusive ads, even if you are not connected to a VPN server at the time. If you use my link, which you can see here on screen, and the description section below, you will get exclusive NordVPN deal with 4 extra months for free. Each account can be used across 6 devices and it is risk-free with NordVPN 30-day money-back guarantee. If you are still unsure, you can visit their website to learn more about how VPNs work. Anyway, back to the episode. Wu Song was a rude and rough man. Certainly not the most pleasant individual to have around. He took refuge at Tai Jing's place for beating up a man, and even his presence had started to grind on his host's patience. Yet Song Jiang could immediately see the good in him and his heroic nature. The two quickly became close friends and even swore an oath of brotherhood. Throughout this novel, Song Jiang managed to convince the wildest variety of people to join him whether it be through his godly charm or his devious blackmails. We will see more of the later in the next episode. As for one of the best ways to charm people, it is to be genuinely interested in them. When Wu Song wanted to return home because he missed his biological brother, Song Chang escorted him and walked for miles together before turning back. The next lesson is to not to be stingy with your money. He gifted Wu Song some money for his traveling expenses and that made him eternally grateful. In China, the most popular water margin character is undoubtedly Wu Song. Even those who didn't know anything about the novel may know this character because he is the subject of various cultural spin-offs. Part of his story had historically been adapted into the various Chinese opera traditions, and also the erotic novel spin-off Qing Ping Mei, or The Plum in the Golden Vase. In that story, he was reduced to a minor character. The most popular part to be adapted into Chinese opera is the chapter where he killed a tiger with his bare hands, which is coming up soon. This chapter almost perfectly exemplifies the four-act storytelling structure of East Asia, Qi Cheng Zuan He, which was originally used for Chinese poetry, but later applied to various art forms. In Japan, where it became Qi Shou Ten Ketsu, it is even applied to modern manga writing. As Hirohiko Araki, the author of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, explained it best in his book. Chi, or the beginning, is quite easy to understand. This part begins with Wu Song taking a break from his journey and patronized an inn near the Jingyang Ridge. The shop had a rule, stating that patrons should not cross the pass after drinking more than three bowls of wine. Not only that the wine was too strong, there was a tiger out there that had killed 20 to 30 victims. Oh, shut it! Wu Song ignored the warning and continued drinking. Now, here comes the Cheng. Not long after Wu Song had left the inn, he saw an official warning about the tiger on a tree. Here, the tension rises. Oh, the waiter wasn't kidding. Now, he is getting nervous for real. 
but it would be too embarrassing for him to turn back. So he continued his journey a bit further until he started to get woozy due to the alcohol and he rested on a boulder. Then suddenly, a cold breeze blew through him, followed by the sound of a creature barreling through the bushes. It then leapt at him. Oh gosh, it is real! Wu Song barely dodged the tiger's pounce. Then the tiger attacked again, and it missed again. But this time, the beast's back is exposed. Here comes the Zuan. Seizing upon this opportunity, Wu Song raised his staff and with a heavy swing, he broke the staff when it caught a tree during his swing. The beast leapt back to its paws unharmed. Zuan means turn. It could be interpreted as how things turn out or even a reversal. In essence, a big change will happen and it may not necessarily happen in the protagonist's favor. And there could be more than one turn. When the tiger pounced, the desperate Wu Song risked everything to grab the beast by its neck. To his surprise, he succeeded. So he threw it to the ground and with a bit of struggle, he climbed onto its back and started raining down his massive iron fist onto the creature's head. After 50 or 60 blows, the life was snuffed out of this murderous beast. Not long after, Wu Song was discovered by hunters and he was brought to the magistrate's office to be rewarded with money and appointment as guard captain. Cats in Japanese means to tie up or outcome. In the Chinese version, the final part is he, which has a slightly different connotation. He means close or coming together. Chinese writers like to end stories with the reunion of family members or friends. So the moment Wu Song left the magistrate's office, he was greeted by his brother Wu Dalang, who missed him greatly. This four-act story structure can obviously be enclosed within a larger four-act story structure, like a recursive mental broad set. And at this point, we have reached the Cheng part of this video. This part of the story was actually spun off into the erotic novel Jing Ping Mei, which is named after the three central female characters of the novel. And the first character, Jing, is named after Pan Jinglian. Pan Jinglian, the adulterous wife of Wu Dalang, Wu Song's sister-in-law, was a relatively tragic character. She was married off to Wu Dalang for free as punishment for refusing her former master's advance. And ever since then, she had been searching for a new lover to whisk her away from the kind yet ugly dwarf Wu Dalang. Even Wu Song became a target for her when they were alone. This angered Wu Song. He cryptically warned his naive brother about it as he moved into the army dormitory. Not long after, when Wu Song was sent out for a mission, Pan Jinglian met the philanderer Xi Xing and the two started their illicit relationship. Assisted by Granny Wang, they then plotted to poison and kill Wu Dalang. They succeeded and almost got away with it, until the coroner, Uncle He, decided to set aside the bribe money he received and hid away some of Wu Dalang's darkened bones, evidence of his poisoning. In case you are wondering, the first book on forensic science was written during the Song Dynasty China. When Wu Song returned, News of his brother's death shook him to the core. Overcome by grief, he tossed and turned that night, and he just couldn't sleep. Then suddenly, he saw his brother's spirit rise from the altar and cried out, Brother, I met a terrible death. It happened so fast, Wu Song wasn't even sure if he really saw it or he was just dreaming. But one thing for sure, he was determined to investigate his brother's death. Eventually, he found Uncle He, and he was provided with his testimony and evidence he had put away. Unfortunately, the evidence wasn't enough to persecute the culprit. So the impatient Wu Song decided to play judge, jury, and executioner. He coerced some neighbors to be his witness and made Pan Jinglian and Granny Wang confess their crimes. Once they did, he executed Jinglian and proceeded to finish off Xi Qing. In the erotic novel, Jing Ping Mei, these two adulterers did not die here. In that version, Wu Song accidentally killed the wrong person and he had to run away, allowing the two to live long enough for a major part of the 100 chapter novel. Later, in court, Granny Wang was sentenced to death for assisting murder. As for Wu Song, obviously the magistrates cannot tolerate this act of vigilantism, despite everyone standing on his side. On account of him handing himself to the law, 
and other considerations, he was given a relatively light sentence and exiled to the prison fortress at Mengzhou. Along his journey, Wu Song and his guards came across a very suspicious inn. Wu Song acted to be oblivious at first and pretended to drink the wine he was served. When his guards started to fall unconscious after drinking it, he pretended to fall unconscious too. Just as he was about to be carried away and butchered into meat bun stuffing, he jumped into action and subdued the hostess. Obviously, Wu Song was too much for her and her servants to handle, so a man rushed out to beg for mercy. His name was Zhang Qing, the gardener, and he apologized for his wife Sun Erniang, the female Yaksha's attempt to rob and butcher him. They even offered to take out the guards and send him to Twin Dragon's Peak to seek refuge with their friend, Lu Zisen. Wu Song appreciated the offer, but declined it. Nevertheless, they became friends after this misunderstanding. When Wu Song reached Mengzhou, he was treated unexpectedly well. Apparently, the warden's son, Si En, was his fan. Grateful for his fine treatment, he decided to do the kid a favor. Apparently, Si En's inn was recently taken over by a ruffian, and he needed Wu Song's help to drive him away. Ah, too easy! As he made his way to the inn, Wu Song made many stops along the way to keep himself topped up with wine. The more drunk he gets, the more powerful he becomes, he claimed. True enough, he beat up the ruffian easily and drove him away. Thus, he spent the next month idly at Si En's inn. Then, one day, Wu Song received an invitation to General Zhang's house. Apparently, the general had heard news of his bravery and entertained him as honored family guest for the next few days. Wu Song was treated like royalty. The general even promised to marry off a singer girl to him, Yu Yulan. Oh wow, can life even get any better? Wu Song thought. Later that night, while he was practicing martial arts, Wu Song heard someone cry out, Thief! Thief! Well, it is about time he returned some of the general's favor, he thought. Yulan pointed Wu Song to where the thief had run off to. But when he got there, all the general's guards piled up on him and arrested him. Moments later, it was reported that they had found stolen goods among Wu Song's possessions. It was a setup, Wu Song realized. The magistrate then sentenced Wu Song to be caned and banished to somewhere further. Apparently, the ruffian had bribed the general through a friend to set up Wu Song as revenge. Wu Song only learned about this when Si En came around to tell him the result of his investigation. Si En also warned him that the guards escorting him were up to no good. Sure enough, the guards tried to silence him along the journey. But Wu Song had already prepared for this and he was the one who snuffed them out instead. Now we have reached the Zuan part of this video. Instead of escaping, Wu Song returned to the general's residence seeking revenge. He killed any servants that crossed his path. And to his dark fortune, he found the general, ruffian, and their friend in the same room. He rushed in to cut them down before they could even react. But that wasn't enough. After the venomous betrayal he had experienced, he had become a flaming pillar of rage. His desire for revenge cannot be so easily quenched. So he proceeded to wreak havoc all over the manor, killing the general's wife, maids, the treacherous Yulan, and even the children in the household. He claimed 15 victims altogether, many of them innocent. In various adaptations, they reduced the number and removed the child killing, because it was just too violent for most people. But what the novel wants us to know here is that Wu Song had become a true monster. This chapter also marked a shift in the general tone of the novel. The writer wanted to remind you that these outlaws are not your half-baked, misunderstood hero. They are true sinners who are barely hanging onto the precipice of good and evil. Not long after he left the mansion, a bunch of goons grabbed Wu Song and brought him to Sun Erniang's shop. After he told her and her husband everything that happened, they gave him a traveling Buddhist monk's clothing and a monk's certificate, someone they butchered a while ago, and directed him to seek refuge at Twin Dragon's Peak. Somewhere along his way, Wu Song saved a woman who had been abducted by an evil Taoist priest. This shows that perhaps he hasn't completely gone over the edge. Even though his monk's attire was just a costume, 
Wu Song's adoption of his Buddhist monk persona until the end of the book symbolizes his path towards atonement. Atonement and redemption is a theme in Water Margin that is not often mentioned, perhaps because it is often overshadowed by all the action scenes. But of course, Wu Song couldn't just change with a snap of a finger. Along his journey, he got drunk and started a fight with a group of strangers. Eventually, he was overwhelmed and tied up because his opponents had over 20 people on their side. After a bit of deserved beating, someone came around and ordered Wu Song to be released. When Wu Song looked up, he realized that it was his good old swan brother, Song Jiang. Apparently, Wu Song had inadvertently picked the fight with his friends, Kong Ming and Kong Liang. Whoops, how embarrassing. <laughs> Thus, we have the He of this episode. Wu Song was reunited with his sworn sibling, Song Jiang, and the spotlight returned to him once again. On the next episode, I will cover Song Jiang's adventures and talk about his method of charming and coercing people to join your band, plus cannibalism in China. By the way, you can support the channel by using the NordVPN link below and get your 4 extra months of subscription. Also, we have got great t-shirt and merch you can get to support the channel. Before I go, I would like to thank all our patrons at Patreon and other contributors for making this series possible. Until next time, stay cool my bros!